Good evening. I'd like to call the Columbia County Board of Commissioners meeting to order September 3rd. Wait for a commissioner. Good evening, and I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Leyes to uh, give her invocation. We thank you this day for fair weather. We thank you for the bounty which you grace us with. And we ask that uh, we may be proper stewards uh, of your bounty. Uh, please, uh, for the people who have the storm approaching, uh, place your hedges of protection around them. And thank goodness and bless and protect our first responders and police and, and linemen. Uh, as they go about the work of making our world right uh, after this destruction. Uh, thank you, Lord, for all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> pledge allegiance to the flag Let the record show we have a full quorum of all five commissioners. Commissioners, you have the min uh, minutes from the April, August 20th meeting in your, in your packets. If that makes your approval, I'll accept a motion to do so. Make a motion to approve. Second, sir. All in favor, raise your right hand. You also have the meeting minutes from August the 27th, the special call meeting. So moved. Second. Raise your right hand. Here's Johnson's agenda set. I believe so, Mr. Chairman. I want to welcome everybody to the uh, first meeting this uh, September of 2019. And I know that uh, this meeting will be recorded and will be online in a couple of days or tomorrow. County website. If there's any reason that you want to watch it again, it will be there. I don't have any special recognitions. We do have a couple of people that uh, have requested to speak, and if it's all right, we'll pull, um, put those in when we actually address that item. Commissioners, you have the consent agenda in front of you. This item has been vetted through committee and received the necessary votes to be placed on this agenda. So unless you have uh, changes, I'll accept a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. And we'll go straight into the debate agenda. Commissioner Malier, I believe you have. Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning C2 to S1 for expansion of a proposed self-storage facility located at 079095D, subject to the conditions enumerated in the August 15th, 2019 Planning Commission report. Second. Doctor, can you explain this to us? So this is the, uh, this, this is the addition of a track of land in the front of a, a previously rezoned track of land. So uh, the self storage in the rear of this is already approved. They're asking to bring in the small piece up here in the front into that zoning as well. So again, all this in the back here is already approved. Any discussion? All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the request for a major S-1 revision for the property located at 079095C and 078A220 to revise the site plan for a previously approved self-storage facility subject to the conditions enumerated in the August 15, 2019 Planning Commission report. Second. So this is the, the same item. It just revised the site plan was approved to bring that self-storage into that uh, now rezoned parcel. So. Um, they also provided us with the elevation showing the front of the building. That's one of the conditions that the uh, proposed building shall comply with the elevation in the rendering submitted. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the request to rezone from RA to S1 for solar farm located at tax map 027065, subject to the conditions enumerated in the August 15, 2019 Planning Commission report and the additional condition that all development must follow Columbia County's land disturbance per, um, permit procedures. Second. I know there are a couple of folks who wanted to speak about this. So, uh, Ms. Mr. Kelly James. Ms. 
Come on up, if you will, please, and just state your name and address for the record. And... I, this is my first. I've never been here. Y'all might have already been asking, asking these questions, and okay, yes. I don't know um, the answer, Ms. but. Miss James, you need to, to restate your name and address in the mic. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Kelly James, and it's 6765 Cobham Road in Appling. And so, okay, so my question is, what information has been presented to you guys as far as, would y'all even have a vote? I mean, like, you can turn these solar farms down at this point. It's still, okay. So have you received information about the decrease in property values as far as, like, any kind of studies or any kind of information, or is it just hearsay? I can only speak for myself, and the information that I've read, there were no de decrease in property values. Okay, because, I mean, I, I just went online for an hour today, basically. And, I mean, I found a study. <clears throat> basically, what they're saying is that, um, and it was, it's legit, it's from Dr. Varun Ray from the University of Texas. And he is an engineer. He researches this. I mean, he's a well-published researcher. Um, and he said that there's not a lot of information um, that for assessors to go on because solar power is relatively new as far as um, evaluating property values. Um, however, if I, I didn't print out all 68 pages and I didn't read it in that hour, okay, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. But um, on the very last page, on page 68, he says if the impact were the true impact and the home values were the same for the whole county, then the results suggest that being located 100 feet from a uh, 20 megawatt solar installation would be associated with a $26,000, $252, 26,252 decline in home value on average. And what he did is he sent out questionnaires to um, states who had um, a large number of solar farms, basically to property you know assessors for them to respond to his questionnaire and return it back. And he did all this statistical analysis and all of that. Um, so that was. That was just one thing I found. Um, that brought one question to mind. Can you tell me that statistic again? How many feet? Um, within 100. But it was up to a half a mile. That was the, um, the, like the main impact. Within a half a mile, you would see a negative property decrease within that radius. And so I guess my, my question on that is, could the commission, if you're going to approve the solar farm, could you not pass legislation or some kind of ruling that the people who were there before the solar farms were approved? So in other words, like the little old lady that's on Yelton Road, and I'm not, with, I'm not within 100 feet or even a half mile of one, praise God, but I don't want one within my property. You know, I don't want one around my property. I'm against them. But could you not um, require that the solar company um, require an appraisal outside of, let's say, a half mile radius or whatever is known to be a negative, a negative decrease, you know, your negative property value. So therefore they can compare an appraisal with a property, similar property outside of that zone. And then when they go to sell, they should be able to get their money back. In other words, their, their ability to make their profit on their land is fine. I don't have any, I mean, it's America, they can do what they want to with their land on their solar farm, but it shouldn't impact the re residents around them that were there before them you know, for them to lose money on their property. That's kind of how I feel about that. I feel like there's a way to do. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. And I, two, I think it would prevent a lot of solar farms from wanting to come here and locate <coughs> here. If, if I think I, would be ideal. If I may, sir, I hate to answer a question with another question, but did uh, the study or his work indicate the megawatt size? Yeah, it, uh, it breaks it all down. You can the read facilities. it. it does. And I say that because as we're going along, we're all learning a lot more about these solar farms. Right. Um, in terms of the property values and correct and, and, and the effect. And, and and that would be I guess one question that I would have. I did see a very complicated formula. It took a page to go through it. Yeah. Uh, to do exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Right. That's what I'm saying. I didn't yes. read the whole thing. I didn't read it. Uh, but I, I am interested in a conversation that discusses how we are going to approach these solar farms in terms of number, frequency, size. Um, but that's a discussion that, is, that has just begun. Okay. Well, that, my recommendation, though, would be to give those people that live within that half-mile radius um, a fair shot if they sell their property. I feel like it should be put back on the solar company. 
why should they lose money for them to, you know, to make a killing? The other thing I found, too, um, and I, I'm just wondering, did anybody present anything about the chemicals or any of that stuff? They did? Okay. Um, yeah, but they, yeah, they actually, I, did, I don't know. So Folks are actually here if you want to direct this directly to the company. Sure. I hear from their way. Well, sure. You won't lose your time. You won't I guess lose what, your I, what I have read, again, mm -hmm. in my hours worth of research, is that the decommissioning process, when it comes to the end of the solar panel's life, that's when you have the most um, risk to being exposed to the chemicals within them. Um, and there's several, I mean, several things I've read that, I mean, I'm not an engineering expert or anything like that, but I would think that... Um, we need to focus on it. In fact, let's see. Wait, hold on just a second. I'm sorry. If the lifespan is, from what I read, 30 years, are there any that have been decommissioned at this point that anybody would know of? I can't answer that. I will say that when they were asked this question, that they said almost the entire panel is made out of recyclable material, so they're going to reuse everything that's in them. But again, they're here. They're welcome to get up okay. and answer. Okay, well, in, a, in an article in Forbes magazine dated May 23rd, 2018, it says that the recycling costs uh, today are more than the economic value of the materials recovered, which is why most solar panels end up in landfills. Um, that's one thing. And then it says... Um, that a lot of these companies have gone bankrupt. Um, not, I mean, now I don't know what percentage, I mean, they listed several names of the companies and I'm not familiar with any of them. Um, and I don't know if that's 1% of the solar companies or if that's, you know, a big chunk of solar com panel companies, you know, I don't know. Um, but they went bankrupt since 2016 and, you know, we're 2019. And the article goes on to say, um, an obvious solution would be to impose a new fee on solar panels that would go into a um, federal disposal and decommissioning fund. The funds would then in the future be dispensed to state and local governments to pay for the removal and recycling or long-term storage of solar panel waste. The advantage of this fund over extended producer responsibility is that it would ensure that solar panels are safely decommissioned, recycled, or stored over the long term, even after solar manufacturers go bankrupt. And so they kind of said it better than I could. Obviously. Ms. Ms. Kelly, do you know if that was referring specifically to solar farm panels as opposed to individual building panels? I don't know. There's a difference. Knowledge, they're manufactured the same. It's just the way that they're transferred back. I mean, like in a home, you would store your power on a battery. You know, you you get your solar all day long, and then you store it on a battery for use at night. But the way I understood it, I talked to um, Will Butler, and he said that the energy is sent directly back through the power line, so there's no battery. <coughs> But I mean, I think that the panels are the same, maybe may a difference in size. As far as technology, um, I mean, you know, there, there's a couple of different chemicals that go in all of it. But the, the point is, is that in 30 or 35 years, if the companies that are selling these solar panels were to go bankrupt, the taxpayers of this county would be stuck with the cost of decommissioning and putting it somewhere. And I'm wondering if you guys have prepared for that, and I would recommend a um, decommissioning fund be paid by that solar company and put away now um, in the event they do go bankrupt. Because you don't know what the future is going to hold. I mean, that's kind of... Um, I don't know. And then, so and I guess it depends on what technology or what they're using in the solar panels, like what chemicals but some of them are a lot more dangerous than others um, as far as groundwater. Said there were no chemicals, that it was yeah. safe. So who's, who's here from the company? Hey, could you please approach the podium? I mean, and it depends on what they're using. However, oh, go ahead. Problem. I'm, I'm Mark Jones, Inman Solar. Um, there are a couple of different, uh, to address the uh, technology question of whether or not there's uh, harmful chemicals solar panels. The type of uh, technology being deployed here is uh, polysilicon crystal. Um, there's a different technology that sometimes is used called thin film that does uh, involve cadmium telluride that can have some materials that are uh, considered hazardous. That is not this type, type of technology. We're using a very standard form <laughs> of uh, polysilicon. It's, uh, the solar panels are constructed of silicon, 
um, silver, glass, phosphorus, boron, and aluminum, all of which are recyclable materials that are non-hazardous uh, to the general public, even if they're broken, <coughs> smashed to the ground. They do not pose a um, health hazard or cause pollution. Um, uh, to address some of the bankruptcy concerns, uh, the vast majority of the projects that we are doing are being sold to utilities. Um, so the risk of bankruptcy um, is the equivalent of a, of a major utility that in this case is out of state going bankrupt. That uh, bankruptcy risk is quite low. Um, I'm not at liberty to say who this would be. This investor would be just because we haven't closed the project, but we've done a, about 70 megawatts of projects owned by major investor utilities that are located in North Carolina, one in Washington, D.C., another in Pennsylvania, um, that are household names that you would know. Um, I guess to, to comment back to some of the zoning concerns, I can certainly appreciate, any, appreciate anybody being concerned and they should be about effect of a solar farm on their property values that everybody should take seriously. I think this is a uniquely positioned solar farm in that it's not visible from the street or from any property angle near it. And the only one that is, it is abutting an adjacent property owner, we've agreed to put in a buffer that could be augmented in the event that the didn't come back satisfactorily or grow back to the see the solar. So I don't see how a solar farm that is not visible to any household affect its property value from a practical matter. Now, again, I, I, I certainly encourage anybody to take that issue seriously because if your house was right next to one, maybe you would have an issue. In this case, we don't have that. Can I ask you a question on the uh, dec decommissioning of, of the units? Uh, the reason they're decommissioned is because their lifespan has declined so much that the, the, the it's power not purchase mandatory agreements, that they have to go away in 30 years. Is that it? Has to do with the length. And in this case, it's actually 35 years. Right. That we have the, the solar farms. We can't really project out farther than the power purchase agreement that we have with Georgia Power. Um. So. It could be that at the end of the lifespan of that power purchase agreement, that there would be a new program that we could enter into and sell that power and continue to do so. What happens with polysilicon, it's a, it, they degrade in performance 0.7% per year for the entire lifespan. So 25 years from now, it will be producing 80% of the power it produced day one, and it will continue to gradually decline. It's just a nat it's just physics, the way they operate. but. In theory, it could still, you know, if, if a new program was available, we would just re-enter the new program and keep producing power. If In the event that that was not possible, 35 years is a long time from now, obviously, that you know, new technology had overtaken solar farms and it no longer had a useful life to sell power into, or there was no program available for us to sell into, then we would decommission it. I would, uh, I would doubt you have any information on y'all disassembling any of units that you've put out? Uh, we've had to. What is the cost? We've had to take down and reinstall some roof mount projects. Um, we have not had to do that on a ground mount, but we do have data on that um, as, a, as a facsimile, for lack of a better word. And that, those are a couple projects that we were. Any questions? Yes, I have a question for Ms. Kelly. The, um, you were talking about the, going back to the study about being 100 feet <clears throat> away from it and it reducing your property value. As it stands right now, this property is owned RA, which is agricultural. Um, <clears throat> have you looked at the reduction in property value if this is actually used for agriculture? I mean, a, a poultry house, a bovine farm, swine herds, those would also... That would, those would also affect your property values. Agree. The smell or, or whatever right. from, you know, from several hundred feet yards Correct. miles away because they smell. Agreed. Would that be preferable to a oh, solar farm right that you here. can't No, see? I'd be right here again. <laughs> but they, no, you, wouldn't, you because know, they wouldn't I mean, have to come back to us if they wanted to put a chicken house there because it's already RA. It's already zoned for ag. So she could, she could sell it to somebody who wanted to do a chicken farm, 
hogs, any of that. And, I, and my question, I'm being very serious when I say, is that preferable to you as an agricultural use than something you're not going to see or hear once it's established in a community? Um, well, like I said, I don't live within a half mile radius technically. I just don't want um, one around me. Okay, so for me, it's not going to be a direct effect. But I think that as all you know, as commissioners, that it's common sense that we don't want something that's going to decrease our property value, regardless of what it is, um, whether it stinks like International Paper or Shapiro Meatpacking in Richmond County, we don't want it. You know what I mean? Or a chicken house or, you know, whatever the case may be. Or if it makes a lot of noise like a, a wind farm or, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I would be here again <laughs> with, they wouldn't with have something to come else. Back to us so, if they wanted to put hogs or cows or chickens, they would. we wouldn't be here. There would be no question. They would well, I, mean, so, I, I have a cow farm down the road from me. I actually love walk, driving by those cows every day. I mean, seriously, it's great. I, I do understand your concern. I mean, there, there, it's a lot nicer to look at that, not necessarily chicken house. I get it. And I get what you're saying, but I think that there's more, I think there's just a little bit more to it on the backside that could bite us in the butt if we're not careful as taxpayers. And um, anyway, so. I totally it. understand your concerns as this is, this will be what, number four that's come in in a very short time frame. And I think we need to look as a commission at each one individually and how are they going to be located and whether they're going to be visible from residents and all. This one, I was opposed to one of the others. This one, I don't think be visible from anybody. So this would probably be an ideal location, not an ideal, but a be a acceptable location but I agree, not every location is. Have y'all mandated like what kind of um, landscaping they're going to be required to put? Is I mean, you know, you can put in... pine trees, but they don't grow close together. Or you can put, you know, Leland cypress, and they do, but they've got to be fertilized and maintained. So I'm just curious, like, if y'all have been that specific. Yes, yes, ma'am. We have we have landscaping requirements uh, for anything like this, and that's spelled out in the, in the staff report. Okay, I don't have that. I'm, I'm sorry. A, uh, uh, Commissioner Richardson and I, you know, we, we, we share areas where these are considered more and there are none of the, in the other districts. So um, I totally understand. I mean, I, I live near some things that, uh, you know, I, I find less than attractive. Uh, so so I understand. Rural. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still rural, you know, uh, so you know, we, under, we understand and uh, Commissioner Richardson just moved to a rural area. So we're, we are sensitive to those issues. Okay. One of the um, questions, one of the comments okay. that you had um, was about establishing a fund for the county to clean it up later. Mr. Schlachter, what is the property owner's responsibility in that? What, is that the county's responsibility to clean it up at the end when that all fall on the property owner? It is private property, so um, it'd be on them. And I believe this install, there is no lasting impact. I believe the, uh, the support poles are driven into the ground. They're not poured in concrete. Um, had where the uh, transformer, I believe it's a transformer, you all have in the set. There you go. It's uh, poured on the ground, so it walks away, it's taken out easy. So if they were to decommission this site, it literally everything just picks up and leaves. There's no lasting impact to the ground itself. In terms of impact, uh, well, Ms. Kelly's mm -hmm. here, and she may have forgotten to ask. Mr. Johnson, the first project, one of the projects over in Yelton Road, uh, one of the comments that I've seen over and over is that that project, got ugly uh, right off and several things went wrong with it in terms of appearance and um, can you lead us through how how that happened and what we can do going forward yes sir in, in that particular instance we had a situation where the applicant came in and, and requested the zoning was moving forward with the project but then uh, decided to timber the property and if you have a timber permit then you're exempt from uh, a lot of soil and erosion and sediment issues there uh, so um, and, and then beyond that on that particular case the applicant also went to EPD to, to get uh, their permits required permits to move forward well we are what's called an LIA a local issuing authority which means that we handle our own permitting and by way of permitting we also handle our own inspections if EPD is going to provide the permit then they would have to provide the inspections well we all know 
that the folks at EPD in Atlanta don't have anybody here doing inspections. So <clears throat> it was kind of one of those situations where <clears throat> they pulled a timbering permit, they made a mess of the property, and then EPD had the oversight of the property. They didn't have anybody to, to provide the necessary oversight. So we get a call from EPD basically telling us, you know, Columbia County, you take over the, the uh, oversight of this project, Very which good. leads us to this, which I believe a condition that was made in the motion was that uh, if they do this, they have to follow Columbia County's land disturbance permit procedures. We were very concerned about that. There are loopholes in every law. We want to make sure we try to close those. And that was one of the reasons for the motion the way it is. Thank you, sir. Why not, though? Um, or, or would y'all consider doing, um, con looking at the property values as far as going outside of that and having the solar company I don't know how you would pinpoint whether the solar farm caused the decline in property values or something else happened in that time frame that could have caused the decline in property values. Well, I see that point, too. So, so, yeah, so a lot of things could change over that, that time frame. You know, one of the items that, that came to our attention as well, and I believe it, it goes to James' point, <clears throat> Is, is the property values. That's always an issue. Um, just like you can find a study saying that, that it, you know, it does cause, you can find 10 that say it doesn't. That's we correct. did. We actually went through. Right. I, I just did it sitting here, and, and, and I found seven that said it doesn't affect property values and one that said it does. It depends right. on what keywords you put in. That's correct. So really it's what's best for our community. I mean, that's really what we have to do. We have to protect our taxpayers and our community. Uh, but I can tell you that, that this property is going to be if it affects the property value in any way, it's going to affect it from an aesthetic point of view, meaning that the people next door would not want to be near it. Therefore, their property would be worth less if they could see it because somebody would say, I don't want to live next to it. As far as the, the value itself, the values based on property, we would not assess a, a commercial piece of property the same way we did a residential piece of property. Right. So um, it's not going to affect any of the residential assessments around it based on what's going there. But I'll tell you what could affect it. We've run into this, and I think this is an important point for the commission. If the applicant was coming in here asking for our old R3 zoning or for a PRD, then they could be getting two, three units an acre of houses there. And if they did that, um, we could be looking at 4,000 square foot houses on 7,500 square foot lots with seven and a half foot setbacks. And what that means is the houses are 15 feet apart. Right. They're 4,500 4, square feet on a 7,500 square foot lot, and and they they sell those houses for two hundred ninety thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars. Right. So now, if I live in a 3,500 square foot home, and 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 that's worth two ninety, then what's my my property value is automatically going down because I got I got less house than they have, mm -hmm. and that's a brand new house that's been sold, and the assessors are required to use those sales as part of the assessment. And I think that's the big challenge that we have, is making sure we're comparing apples to apples. Right. And, and I think this commission, where I know because of my directions, has, has been very cognizant of the fact of, of saying we want to make sure that landowners have the ability to do what they want to do with their property within reason. Right. Right? But we want to make sure that, that we have what's called smart growth. And and these situations where it's hidden and the surrounding property owners don't seem to, to, to mind and you can't see it, I think in, in staff's mind is better than the same applicant coming here asking for a PRD subdivision because now I'm going to put you know, however many houses in there. Let's just say that it's 150 or 200 houses in there. That's how many trips a day, how many more kids in our schools. We're dealing with that all over the place. Uh, so, you know, in my mind, and, and I don't vote, but in my mind, this has taken a 50-acre parcel off the market that could be these houses that I would hate to see. I live in Aplin, and I would hate to see those houses, my, personally. Right. Um, that kind of density there, but, but it could happen. Um, I, I think that we just need to consider that when we're talking about land value and land costs. Those two are not assessed the same way. Your property values are not going to go down because of this, other than aesthetics, but they would go down depending on what somebody built there. Is there, um, is there a, like I, I hadn't asked before, I think I talked to Will Butler, and he said that there is like a master plan for development for Columbia. Yes, ma'am, a 2030 is. plan. There is. Yes, ma'am. And it's a guide. It's a guide, but okay, so like where do solar farms fit in? He said there are utilities that can go anywhere. 
Can't we stick them somewhere else like Screven County? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> I, mean, no, I mean, seriously. I'm sorry. But they can just go anywhere. I mean, I'm with you on the, the other, the housing. I mean, I hear Ms. you Ms. and Jane, I agree. This kid, actually, we normally have a five yeah. minute speaking. I'm limit. sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 you're good. But I'm asking. But you, I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Just, I just wanted to make a quick comment, ma'am, to Mr. Johnson's point. Um, quite often, and in, in, in some, <laughs> I've, I've had this discussion a few times today, we actually play defense if you want to think about it that way, as, as commissioners, to, to what he was saying. I mean, sometimes we don't always get the ideal project that we want. Everybody wants a Trader Joe's, okay, no matter where they are. But we sometimes have to take the project that we think will be a better project than what may come down the road without needing our approval. So if we get a project that will work with us and that is, that is not harmful and that will stay on the tax rolls without – taxing, not to use the same word, but without taxing our infrastructure, our school system, our utilities and things like that, that's a victory for us as opposed to having a number of small homes taking up our utilities, our resources, our, our infrastructure. Sometimes we have to consider that as well. It, it might not always be what our, our constituents are asking for, but we do have to keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Donna King. Ms. King, would you like to sit? No, I can alter that I microphone. Sat long okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's stiff. My name is Donna King. I live at 6386 <clears throat> Yelton Road, Appling, Georgia. I own six acres there. And uh, if you would just please. Say what you need to say and ask questions, but if, if we've already addressed your question, then I would appreciate it if you would. Well, if I don't understand it, I will address it. If I don't Perfect. understand what you mean. Thanks. First of all, I'd like to say that um, as a private homeowner with some land, you can do what you want with your land, but there are other people that have land in the same areas too. Before I forget, just one quick, one quick comment on Mr. Johnson's uh, bringing up the fact about a subdivision coming there with small parcels of land. I find that would be maybe far stretched since we don't have any sewage in Appling where we live. So in our particular area, a lot would have to go into even getting that approved to begin with. Um, I'll go real quickly, but I do have environmental issues. My environmental issues are not only for the deer, the turkey, the raccoons, and everything else that lives around there, but uh, and not only for the units themselves. Uh, my question is the cleaning materials that are used to clean these things. I know they would have to be cleaned because you have to have get the sunlight, get to the panels to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, how is that going to be controlled? What kind of material is that? Y'all know we have Greenbrier Creek right there. Um, it's a mile down from the one that's already working on Yelton and Ray Owens, and it's probably closer on this one that's being proposed, Greenbrier Creek. Um, they just had to do a lot of work on it. Um, who's going to pay for that if it has to be remediated because of chemicals or whatever getting into that uh, that that creek? That's a question that I have. Um, I still have the question of safety for people. I live half a mile from both of them, and I, I worry about the safety of them. Uh, if you have a big lightning strike, what's that going to do? Is it going to all blow up? Are we going to have a big fire? You know what what the deal is because we are rural in that area, but we are a neighborhood. Um, I should have um, researched it and got, uh, got to you how many people actually live within that, that area of Yelton and Scotts Ferry and Ray Owens, but um, it's a good number. Uh, when it comes to property values, um, like Mr. Johnson said, I mean, you have to take into effect what people pay for land to do, to do the value, valuation, reevaluation or whatever. Um, if I was looking to buy acreage, I certainly wouldn't want to buy acreage where there were solar farms. And as I asked in the um, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting back in April for the one that was coming up at Ray Owens and Yelton, um, oh, who's to say that you put one here, you put one a half a mile here, who's going to say that the person that lives a quarter mile down here is not going to put in one? What is in place to keep these people from having us living in a living in a solar farm, what is going to come of that? Because, like as you know, there are people that have larger tracts of land out where we live. Some that have many, many more acres than I have. But what's to say 
that if you don't put some kind of limit on how close these things can be, that we're going to just be houses living within a solar farm, or solar farms. That is a concern that I have. Um, that, that actually probably is my, my main concern. We already have the one on Yelton and Ray Owens that's been approved. It's in the works. Now this one, if it's approved. What's to say that people aren't going to just say, well, I want to lease this. I'm going to keep my land and lease it and make me some big money. And they, they just live a mile down the road, two miles down the road. Um, you can't tell me that that will not impact in a negative way the property values of the people that live there. Because who's going to want to buy a house in the middle of solar farms? I don't think many would. Um, and I would just ask this question to you guys. How many of you guys would like to live within a half a mile of two solar farms? That we really don't even, uh, I'm not saying that we're all ignorant, but unless you're an engineer and you've studied it all and you have a lot of time to look at all the angles and it's because it is so new, we really don't know how it's going to work in the next 30 years or 40 years or 20 years or whatever or 10 years. Um, I just don't think it's wise to put two solar farms as the crow flies within a mile of each other. I don't know how much, I can't remember how many, how many acres the one on Yelton and Ray Owens was, but I think this one y'all said was 90. Is that what it was? 50. How many acres? 30, 30, 32. 50, 50 I, I mean, total, that's, that's, that's a lot of acreage. And if that's like the average size of them, I don't know how, I know I've seen photos of them that just seem like they go for miles and miles and miles. I, I just don't want to live, I don't want my little six acres to be in the middle of a solar farm. And I wouldn't want my neighbors in Cobham, where uh, this other young lady lived, or, or my neighbors on Scotts Ferry, or my neighbors on Cobham, or my son on Moontown, uh, or any, I, I wouldn't want that for anybody in our rural area. Like, <laughs> you can go to Scriven County and put them there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, and where was the fourth one, if I may ask? One is on Newman. Newman Town Road? Or uh, the road that cuts across from Gordon Highway to Newman Town. Okay, okay, that's the one I didn't know about. One's then. Ridge so Road. The one right. on, uh, what, and and if, is this the right arena to ask? What is the status of the one on Ridge Road? Is it going forth? I never drive over that way. You that one was approved the same was, time? Yes, ma'am, same night. The same night, same yeah. Same night as the one on Yelton. Right. It's in the middle of 200 acres. I don't know that if they were doing it, anybody would. Yeah could see it or no. So, do you know if there are any more proposed coming up down the pike? Because when you live in a rural area, unless you get in your little car and you drive around and see those nice little black and white signs, you're not going to know until, what, two or three weeks before the agenda's posted what's going on in the county or, or in your area of the woods. Or do you know of any more that are coming down the pike? Mr. Butler, anything? Well, the, the, in closing, I, I won't take any, any more of your time, but in closing, I would ask... What has been done or what will be done to limit the number of solar farms that can be uh, approved and built within a certain radius? Has anybody, has that was addressed at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting that I was at in April. I asked that question then, and they all said, well, we, there's really nothing in place now. We'll have to look at that. Is it being looked at? Is it not being looked at? Is there an ordinance that, that they could be um, not to my knowledge. Approved. Not to my knowledge. Not sure. Because you're talking about that at the end of the county, lots of land. You know, one of the greatest challenges that the commission faces is the rezoning of property mm -hmm. and the balancing property. I'm a private property rights guy. Always mm -hmm. have. Oh, me always too. Will I be. am too. And I live by cows and chickens too, so that don't bother. That doesn't bother me. And so we're always faced with, actually. Probably the first time I've dealt with a, a lot of solar farm. Mm -hmm. Before it's usually cars and houses. Mm -hmm. Johnson said, usually it's they don't want 200 homes and 400 cars clogging the roads where they are, and um, so it's there's never a clear answer. And it's again the hardest thing that we deal with. So again, to my knowledge, there is nothing that would limit that. But mm -hmm. we tend to have um, moratoriums in, on this county on growth. So. Yeah, I just I, I, I just I just feel that it's. it's end of the county where it is rural. A lot of people move out there and buy plots of acreage to have a quieter, peaceful kind of life, to live with nature, commune with nature. I've got about 16 deer that I know by name. You know? <laughs> and uh, at the same time, uh, I do um, honor the fact that a person should be able to do what they want to do. 
their land within limits. I just don't like the fact that two people with large tracts of land are going to have solar farms within a half a mile of where I live and where a good number of other people live. So if anybody wants to answer or entertain those questions, I would sure appreciate it. I can answer some of the, the, the cleaning. We asked that question to the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. They state based on the amount of rain we get in this area, they don't have to actually clean the panels. They, they basically wash themselves. They talked about using livestock, I believe, to keep the grass down instead of having to go out there and treat it. Oh, yeah. If they're not using livestock, they would say they were using mowers. Yeah. I don't think there's a plan on chemicals. Oh, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just thinking about the chemicals to clean the panels themselves when they get, when, like your car, if you leave your car out all the time, you get that film over your, your windows, the chemicals to clean the actual unit yeah. for the sun. I was yeah, they were asked that question, about. and they stated no chemicals. They were letting the rain do it. That's the case. That's great. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. More thing. Could you just... Sure. You're here. Would you mind standing in opposition? <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, yes, sir. That was the question. If, uh -huh. So you're you're in opposition as well. Okay. Well, commissioners, you have a. Um, Motion before you've heard the debate. We have one more what? item. Class two to speak, Mr. Right Chairman. Right. Robert Neal. And I ask you to please to limit your questions and comments to issues that haven't already been discussed. I will do that. Thank you. And I understand. Uh, my comment on the solar farm is that you know, I, I understand the need for it and, and, and all of that. I think that uh, I, I would hope that there would be other currently zoned properties, such as near the interstate and so forth, that are more appropriate for that than a residential area, as this is a residential area that you would rezone. My primary point today is not on that, though, it's on soil erosion. Have any of you been to the site at Yelton and um, Ray Owens Road? I've driven by, yes. When has it been recently? Last week. All right. What was the condition of the property? Could you just Why don't you tell it? me, since you seem to know? Oh, well, you said you rode by it, but uh, uh, the condition of the property is ravaged. It's been timbered. That's been what timbered. you were making reference to, Scott. Yes. yes. It's been timbered, it's too. Timbered. Now, that's not illegal, and I understand that. But let me ask you a question. Would you ever let any construction project in the county do that to the land? No, you wouldn't. Not without soil erosion prevention. Neil, did you hear Mr. Johnson's answer to that? I did not. I'm sorry. It initially went through EPD instead of the county. I realize that, sir. So and I realize it got out through. of control, and the county grabbed it when it realized it. Well, I understand that, and, and, and that's that's currently the thinking. But let me ask you a question: Would it be would it have been possible? Now you had the recommendation from the planning commission to uh, to, to that they would follow soil provision provisions. Know, in, as part of this project. Yes, sir. That is actually that you. I think you came in after the motion was made, sir. That that actually Probably. was added to the motion that it would follow Columbia County uh, land disturbance permit procedure. So, our, what does that mean? Does that mean that they they will have to have a silt fence and everything else at that? Now, will, will you add that? We would. I would like to request that the county commission consider doing that for all future rezonings. It was a raping of the land. To know you're going to build a solar farm at Yelton Road in your district, Mr. Place, and then go and timber it and leave it barren for weeks on end, that that would never be allowed by anybody in this county. And I will say one more thing. No matter if it's the EPD or the Forestry Commission or whatever, the soil erosion damage that takes place in Columbia County will have to be dealt with by Columbia County. It is a cop-out, if you ask me, to go and say, well, that's EPD, because EPD doesn't care anything about it. You, there's an excavator on the property today, and you know that you never allow an excavator on a property that's supposed to be a construction project without soil, you know, uh, soil erosion prevention. So the EPD and the Forestry Commission don't care about it. Now, Columbia County does care about it, and I commend the soil erosion department in this county. They do an outstanding job. I can tell you personally, I built a home last year. I had spent $2,000 before I could move full of dirt on our property. 
I was willing to do that because it is the right thing to do. But I think everybody should follow the same rules in this county. If it's, if it's governed by the EPD, that doesn't mean you couldn't put a condition on the rezoning, on the rezoning does it? Explained exactly what he missed. Maybe missed your explanation. So I believe that's, that's where we are now in, in this particular one, uh, so as not to slip through the cracks because what they did was legal. Uh, there's been a condition placed on this one that they have to follow Columbia County's land disturbance permit procedures, which means they're going to have to come in when they start their development. They're going to have to give us a development well, that, plan. They're going to have to go through the whole process. They're going to put up silt fence. They got to do everything. That's great. And that's, that's, that's already that's well, in so, the motion. Well, I, I'm sorry I came in late. I thought it was at 630, yes, but it was at 6 apparently. But uh, that's exactly what I was hoping you would do. So thank you very much for doing that. I hope I'm as successful on all of my future endeavors. <laughs> One before you even showed up. How's that? You didn't even have to be here, Mr. Neal. <laughs> Mr. Slot, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. On timbering. Yes, sir. If somebody has acreage and they want to timber their pro property, that's all they're doing. They're not building or whatever. None of the soil erosion or, or silt fencing or any of that is required. Is that? That is, that is correct. That's a state law. State That's law excludes them from our oversight. If they're going to timber. If they're timbering. Now, the property will have to be left untouched for right. three years. Is that correct? If on a, on a standard timbering process, yes, three years. This The Yelton Road was a different situation because they went through EPD and got permits to do what they did. So that doesn't apply in this case, but any other case where they didn't go through EPD, they just go timber it, three or moratorium on any development on that site. That's the way we plug that loophole for us, for Columbia County, but keeping them from going to EPD, which is what we shouldn't be doing anyway, is how we plugged it here. They, they pulled their timber permit through the county and the, they went and got their erosion control plans approved by EPD. For this solar form, I, I agree with you. But we and we've actually been in contact with EPD about this one, and we now have full control over Yelton Road. The day we got control, we immediately called the contractor, and he is fully complying with our law. So the Yelton Road will come into compliance. They're going through their plan process right now, so they will be installing all the perimeters uh, control. I, I know it's late, but they're doing it. But they can't work until they do. Right. Correct. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any other discussion or debate? All in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? Motion carries. Make a motion to approve the request for a major revision to S1 zoning for tax map 078053, 053A, and 053B to allow site revisions for a Bible based theater on the property subject to the conditions enumerated in the August 15, 2019 Planning Commission report. And the landscape plan must be submitted to Columbia County Plan Review and designed by a licensed landscape architect. A light landscape designer may be used upon approval of the planning services director. The landscape architect and project engineer must meet with the Columbia County landscape architect at 50% design phase to address any and all required buffers on the site as well as the overall landscape plan. This meeting shall be on site. The design of the landscape um, Design of the landscape plan along Flowing Wells Road shall screen the proposed pond from Flowing Wells Road and create an attractive landscape feature for the area. Landscaping along Flowing Wells Road frontage shall be installed within six months of completion of the Flowing Wells Road widening project. Second. So approximately a year ago, we had a rezoning for this uh, excuse me, biblical-based theater. Um, and when they came in for the rezoning, they showed us a site plan. Uh, during their design phase, they decided they wanted to uh, better utilize their property, uh, save some trees. You see the existing theater here. They wanted to relocate that theater up more to this area. Um, the parking lot is where it is um, being moved down somewhere in this area. Uh, the pond is up against Flowing Wells Road. So this is a change to the site plan, not a change to zoning. Zoning is already approved. This is just changing the way the site is laid out. Do you have the... Uh Proposed plan on the next page. That's actually what we're voting. Any other discussion? All in favor? Signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. There are a couple of 
private property matters that we can handle outside of executive. As those. I do. I make a motion to approve $17,000 to Timothy R. Kinsley Jr. and Mary L. Sherman, parcel 28. $18,500 to Philip Dukes, parcel 73, $15,850 to Gina R. Weiss and Alexander C. Byersdorfer, parcel 82, $13,860 to Danny R. Collier, parcel 85, $12,200 to Jerry S. Venkentraman, parcels 87, $10,450 to John K. and Ann D. Hill, parcel 88, and $22,100 to Riverview Methodist Church, Parcel 140, to obtain right-of-way easement and or property for the TIA Project PI 008346 SR 28 Furies Ferry Road Widening Project. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the $2,540 to Hayward R. and Shannon F. Vick, Parcel 94, for temporary fencing for the TIA Project PI-0008346, SR-28 Furies Ferry Road Widening Project. Second. Discussion? Raise your right hand. I make a motion to approve Resolution Number 19-29, Declaration of Taking an Order by Condemnation, for a portion of 061027 for the temporary and permanent easement for the Lewiston Road Widening Project. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. I make a motion to approve $13,000 to Pollard Land Company, Inc., parcel 036014, to obtain right-of-way easement and a property for the Clarks Hill Booster Station Project. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. I make a motion to approve $545 to Elizabeth and Scott McClooney, parcel 072021A, to obtain right-of-way easement and or property for the Deerwood Water Line Project. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Anything else we need to do tonight? I make a motion that we adjourn, sir. Second. Second. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Second on that motion. Motion is on the floor. Then you have All in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> Too late. If you had anything, it's over. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Patrice. <laughs> Coming. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Are you still there, Mr.